Hello and welcome to the second part of our how to draw a galaxy map from scratch. Now in the last section of the video we looked at how to create the star map and how to do so literally from nothing. So there is our stars there, nice and bright. And if I come back, we've got our territories defined as well, kind of where we wanted things to happen. Turn those off. And now we're going to try and make it a little bit more organic in terms of how it feels like. It's got a nebula in there, perhaps. And to do that, you need to go and download some pictures of smoke. Smoke or ink and water, it's entirely up to you. I'm going to use the smoke texture. So Control A, Control C, I am using a PC here. Control C copies everything. I'm going to come back and I'm going to paste it down. Now, that's really, really small. So... We're going to expand it up. And we actually want it to fill the whole area to make it feel more like it's got gases and things wafting around in it. Now, this is sitting below our homeworld stars and our small stars. And it is kind of obscuring some detail here and there. So we can simply drop its opacity, 44%, a little bit less if we want, a little bit more if we want. We can put it on top of the stars if we want to separate out our main stars. You could even put it right at the top if you really wanted to, just to kind of blend everything together. In which case, then I'd drop it to maybe something like that even. Maybe something like that even, to create that sort of separation of power. Now... Zooming in, of course, is always important. So if I go all the way in, that's what our map looks like. My computer is struggling. It's not the biggest of machines. And so that's kind of interesting. That's kind of pretty. But these swirls are not in color. They're in black and white. That's not a problem. What we're going to do is we're going to take our stars and we're going to group them with that layer as well. And we're going to make a new folder, a new group, and we're going to call that stars. So now we can turn them on and off at our whim. Back to layer one or layer three. Let's call this nebula. Now you might think that this is actually too much. It's too heavy. So we're going to come in here before we change our color. We're going to go to levels and we're just going to ride the levels up. And we're going to change these little pips. And what that does is that really just punches out the difference between the black and the white area. So maybe you think that something like that. You don't want to lose too much detail, but at the same time, you don't want it so gas-like. So I'm going to do something like that. All right, so that's a little bit better. We've got some areas that doesn't have this tendril-like stuff in it. And now we're going to color it. So new layer as per usual, and uh, choose a color. I want this nebula to be bluish. So choose a blue, choose blue, choose my brush. I can choose any brush I like. I'm going with a fluffy circular one, 500 pixels, a little bit small for me. I'm going to go with two, or I'm going to go with maybe a thousand pixels. Yeah, that's about right. I'm going to make sure that my opacity is down though. I'm going to make it maybe 30 something percent, somewhere there. And then I'm going to describe these shapes um, Separate to the um, layer that we added in for our territories, and there's a reason for that. Space doesn't care about empires. Space is just space. Isn't that a wonderful saying? Space is space. When you run out of space, you've got no more space left. So we're going to do that. Now, what's the reason why I put my brush on 30% is so that I can go over certain areas to really highlight them. And then the rest of the area, it's the same color, but it's not as bright. So I'm just looking to add in a little flare here and there where there needs to be a little bit of extra light. I'm not really paying too much attention to the star positions. You can, if you like, the more you pay attention, the better. That's the rule of life. But um, I'm going to just highlight brushing over and over and over to create highlights and 
not so highlighty. Okay, but that's one color, and one color is not nature's way. Nature likes to have lots of different colors. So I'm just going to work through the color spectrum here, bring in some greens maybe. Yeah, that looks quite nice. And again, because of the soft brush, it really just blends these colors together. I'm just sort of picking off spots where I feel that there could be a little bit more emphasis on the green. That's kind of cool getting in there. And all this is doing is it's just adding a little bit of beauty. You can skip this phase if you want to and go straight on to uh, filling in your empires if you don't uh, want a colored galactic map. NASA spends a lot of time coloring in all their photographs, so it's got to be worthwhile, right? Okay, so something like that. That's looking not too bad. And then let's give some highlights here. Oh, let's go all the way through to yellow. Let's see what that looks like. That is kind of cool. Is it too much? Who knows? It's up to you. You are the creator here. I'm just filling in, like I said, little specks where I think that the yellow would cause it to go green or something like that. Okay, whatever the case might be, that's what we've decided to go with. We will once again go to our famous Gaussian blur, knock the socks off of it, just to... make it blend in a little bit better and then I can come through to my layers change it to multiply if I want that's an interesting effect already and I can just cycle through and I always do because you never know how the coloration is going to really play out overlay is pretty cool look at that that's actually pretty damn awesome I think uh, soft light is even better if you want a brighter one no 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 Oh, subtraction's interesting. That's a very different color universe, isn't it? Note to divide, note to hue, color. Well, that's the color that we've created. So I think I'm going to stick with that one. Now, if you're worried that the nebula is too detailed in terms of the stroke lines, again, don't be afraid to just come through to dear old Gaussian blur and soften it out if you really want to or leave some detail in, but not all of the detail. It's entirely, entirely up to you. So I'm gonna try something here. I'm gonna duplicate the layer, always duplicate the layer. Never be afraid to duplicate the layer. I wanna make that important. Uh, you can always delete it. I'm gonna go with a radial blur. I just wanna see what's gonna happen here. Radial Blur allows you to create this very interesting shape. So let's see what it does. Ah, look at that. That's quite, quite spectacular. And I think that's what I'm actually going to go with. I could unlock the other one underneath and that looks even better. So we've got our galaxy look and feel as far as I'm concerned. I think that's very, very interesting. I'm gonna grab all three of these, control E them down Okay, it's linked them all down. Now I cycle through once again, finding which one works best as an overlay for us. And again, you never can tell. I think lighten or screen is going to be the best bet. Okay, so this is where we are at. And I think that looks pretty damn spectacular. Just remember to save as regularly as you can. Now I'm going to take this layer, turn it into a group, call it Nebula. Okay, so now it does look like we've lost some of our star fidelity in terms of color. And that's because our nebulas, oops, our nebulas above the stars drop it below the stars, we get something like that because if you recall, these small stars are sitting there. So I'm gonna actually pull them out of that group, plop them down there. So our main stars, our homeworld stars are still nice and bright. Our background stars are still there. 
if we really wanted to, we can put them back in here, but then we change them. Uh, not back in there, sorry. <laughs> Where have they gone? Where have they gone? Come back here. Yeah, there we go. All right, and then we can change them to a multiply or perhaps an overlay or a screen even. There we go. That's looking pretty damn good. Right, so it's about deciding your layering, what sits where, who gets what, um, deciding on opacities and that kind of thing. Um, so, and I mean, we might even pop this out here so that it's separate, good. Close that down, put it in between these two, come to Nebula and drop the Nebula however much we feel is necessary without losing the vibrancy that we like, but maybe bringing in some more detailing because when we turn our empires on, we might have a conflict of color. So it's entirely up to us how we want to do it. Now that that is done, moving swiftly along, we now move to defining our empires. Now in Photoshop, I like to use the either the lasso tool or the poly polygon tool. Now this is where we close down all of our layers, we create a new layer. Now, remember I had this map of Braxia buried way down here many, many, many moons ago. The reason for that now is because if I want to make my world feel like Braxia used to feel, because I want player familiarity, this is gonna be really useful because now all I'm going to do is roughly, roughly, and there's no reason to, to be very specific here. Roughly just draw around the old space that the empire used to have. Come to the layer, fill it in. Really doesn't matter what color I choose. Make a new layer. Back to lasso tool. Okay, and here is Drakenmoor, the home of the dark the eight dark dukes. And I'm going to roughly follow those coastlines because I did so when I was creating it. And it's a new layer. So the bottom layer is the Sajet Empire. This layer is Drakenmoor. And it's important to set uh, these names because you'll see why now in a little bit. I'm going to fill that in, clink. Now, these two layers overlap. So which empire should take dominance? Well, we feel that that should be the Dark Duke. So I'm gonna to come to the Sajet layer and press delete. And all that's doing is deleting the layer so that it is exactly in a nice line with the Drakenmoor and you'll see why later. Back to a new layer. Doesn't really matter in terms of order of importance. Lasso tool. Draw out the Cathar, my cat folk people. And I'm going to draw around that. And do something like that and create a weird space holding down the Alt key with the lasso tool still selected allows me to deselect certain areas. So the Cathar have got these two areas of neutrality in them. I quite like that idea. Creates, it creates some interesting questions and some interesting plot options too. So then I'm going to bang that into a certain color. This is the Cathar. Moving along. And we are now into the Gnomish states of Hickwin, where they're continuously blowing themselves up. There's our Gnomish states. I'm using a green palette and you'll see why in a little bit. It's up to you and because they're separate, it doesn't really matter what color you choose now. You can always go back and choose a different color. So don't be afraid to do that if necessary. I'm using the same tone because I'm trying out a little experiment here. 
Okay, that's the barbarians. Now, again, the barbarians and the gnomes are overlapping. So uh, before I get rid of that mask, I'm going to select the gnomish territory, press delete, come back to the barbarians. Moving on, let's do the humans now. Uh, let's do the halflings, actually. They live down here. Clean up that little spike. Again, you don't have to zoom in here because you really are just defining very broad stroke spaces. Okay, there are my halflings. I just need to, you do need to make sure that they they overlap. You don't want little gaps in between. Uh, it'll create literally these pockets of dead space between empires, and they very seldom exist. Usually, they. Oh, look at that! I was about to put that on the barbarians and that must sit on the gnome uh, on the halfling territory their own territory okay good and then what's that little spot there let's have a look all oh, right okay pen tool time 100% doesn't have to be that big and just bucket over it right you don't want those kind of gaps they're just messy Come back out again. Let's do the humans. layer we are not yet done with so we are going to hide it there and take it a million miles away so there is our layout according to our um, let's call this territories and territories we can choose how we want them to be expressed are they solid colors are they not solid colors are they soft are they harsh uh, this becomes a part where you are going to have to decide um, how you want it to play out. If you want them to have different colors, um, that's entirely your, your decision um, to make. If I can finish the sentence. <laughs> Again, though, we'd pop that down there maybe. We could even drop it down here to subtle it up a little bit if we wanted to. Um, and again, color choice is yours entirely. It's about getting definition of the territories. Now, something that we haven't yet done and that we're going to now do... Oh dear, did it put it in there? Let's do that, please. Thank you. So that might work for us as long as we've got clarity of our stars. So if our stars vanish, then this layer needs to change up somehow. And that might very well be just doing something like that. So we can see the territories. Again, it's do you like the idea of it all being in a similar color palette? Or do you want to go in as a radical example? I'm going to use my image adjustment, hue saturation, colorize change the dwarves to a different color, purple or brown. Um, I can make it darker, I can make it lighter. It's entirely up to you how you want to do it and you can work your way through the whole map processing it. What's important though is that this territorization doesn't look very professional and it's often where people stop. Now, it's a case of coming in. <laughs> Let me select a different tool. It's a case of coming into the territory. I'm going to start with the suggest. And this is where we're going to use the blending tools of Photoshop. And we right click and we get blending tools. And I'm going to move it over a little bit so you can see. We're going to go with stroke. Do you see anything happen? No, of course not. The map's too big. 
stroke creates this line around the edge. And often that's how maps delineate um, empires and that kind of thing. Now you've got to decide and you've got to stick to it. Do you want it on the inside, the outside, which obviously is not working here, or the center? And I prefer to go on the inside because we know that our areas have been marked properly. And again, you can choose how thick it is, but once you've chosen, stick to that width. Stick to that width, and you're going to see why in a little bit. Now, a color needs to match roughly with the color of the empire. So here we're dealing with greens. Um, I'm going to make it a several tones darker color, and I'm going to click on OK. Now, this is an unfortunate effect of us having added um, to our map beforehand. Don't panic. Grab your paintbrush. Make it nice and big. And you can just paint over it. Now, I didn't choose the right color there. So I'm going to just hold down I'm going to come back up to the territories first. They're on light and at the moment I'm going to make it pass through. I'm going to push them back up to 100% so that I can choose my color appropriately. I'm going to hide the nebula. I'm going to hide the stars, all that sort of thing, so I can get my exact color. Come back down to Sajeti and just draw in those lines as I would. Actually, just use the pen tool to just select it and fill it. Still some strange edges there, so I'm going to just pop out there and fill it. The stroke automatically will fill in as needed. Okay, so now we're back to defining edges. Now that we've done that, we're going to come to the Chung. We're going to do exactly the same thing. Blending options, stroke. Now it should pick up your previous settings. I hope it does. And again, it's just about choosing a color that best approximates several stops down, several colors down. And so you're just holding space bar, grab your way up. You can also double click on the bar, not on the name, and that will bring up the same thing. Stroke, change it to being the appropriate tone. Okay, and all that we're doing is we're just defining our political borders. And I think in space they would often have a very big political border around neutral zones, that kind of thing. Um, that one actually kind of works. Okay, so now we have finished off delineating our areas. Turn everything back on to check out how it's looking. And we might drop this down back to, say, 40% or so. Give or take. And again, it's about going in and saying, okay, that color works really well because we can see that space. That color doesn't, that color doesn't, that color doesn't. So we can really play around with that as we so choose. Time to save. Now, before we can move on to the final step, which is adding in names and making it look really cool, we just need to make sure that the territories that we've defined, and I'm going to highlight them here, that the territories that we've defined are as we want them to be, including the stars. So I can already see here the Elvish territories missed out this great big star cluster. Why would they do such a thing? It doesn't make sense. So we now into a process where we need to work our way through each of the territories, deciding on whether we want them to be the same color or different colors, and making sure that they are inclusive of the territories that they should be. So lasso tool at the ready. I'm going to just add on some space there. Bucket, select my color. I've just got to go and hide the little stars. We don't need the little stars. They're not important. 
I don't know, they say every roll is important, but not this one. And we're just going to fill it in to make sure that they include those two stars that we need. If I do a quick look around the Sajet Empire, I think everything else looks pretty good, pretty included. Are we happy though? Are we happy with this color for the Sajet? So firstly, I'm gonna rasterize the whole thing so that our edge is defined because we're happy with the color tone contrast. But are we happy with that color? I think the Sajet, because they are our desert people originally, I'm gonna select colorize. I'm gonna scroll it more towards red. I'm gonna bump up that saturation. And I'm going to say that orange is a very good color for a desert-based species. Now, remember, they're not going to necessarily be desert space people when we eventually get to finalizing them. But for now, that's where we want to be. Okay, cool. Moving on, the Chung, our dear Chung. Are we happy with the space inclusion? No, we're not. There's a little bit down here that missed that star there. Shift to add to my selection mask. I'm going to invade some of the territory there of the... I'm not going to do that. All right, that's fine. It's in their neutral zone. Perfect. Bucket tool, make sure I'm on the Chung layer. Alt to get my eyedropper. Bucket to fill it in. And just include that space there. Right, happy with that. Rasterize so that it's all blocked together. Image, adjustment, hue saturation, colorize. Choose a color for the Chung. Now, they are close to the Sajet, but we don't want them to be the same color as the Sajet. That's pretty good to me. All right, moving along. That's the Chung and the Sajet. I can now merge them together. Why am I merging them together? Because I need to save space uh, on my machine. Your computer can start to slow down the more layers you have. So by decreasing the number of layers, you decrease the processing power. And also we fixed there. We're not gonna come back and we're not gonna play around with those looks. So now we are in Drakenmoor and I am literally going to do this for the whole map all the way around. So I'm not going to bore you to death with that. So now we've gone through, I've changed the color of all of the uh, empires. I think it might make it a little bit better to see or easier to see. I'm going to turn all those layers on. And yes, I think that was the right call to make. Again, we can play around with the opacity level of all of this because none of this has changed yet. So if we go to screen, we might get a different effect. And if we drop it down in opacity to say 34%, somewhere around there, we start to get different choices, different ideas going on. Now, the only color that's not really reading too well are the darker colors here. So again, I can just come in here and go to, let's say, for example, hue saturation and change the color of the whole thing altogether. Um, so it really doesn't matter what colors I choose. Um, I can always just come back and play around and uh, make colors that are not reading so well suddenly pop out a little bit better um, depending on how I want to play with my color choices. Um, let's just leave that at zero, shall we? We can drop that down. Um, that's helped make those pop out a little bit better. I can choose, uh, maybe I don't want lighten, maybe I want overlay. No, definitely don't want overlay. Soft light, no. Multiply, no, so we're gonna go with lighten, maybe, yeah, somewhere around there. Again, we can drop this value down so it's barely present, so it's really present, and it 
It's just up to you to decide. But we can now move forward. And that's the important thing because, uh, well, it's always important to move forward, isn't it? Yeah. So, blah, blah, blah. I mustn't use that word anymore. I'm going to close that down. I'm going to create a new file, though, and I'm going to make it a thousand by a thousand. Um, because you're going to see what we're going to do next. And you're going to smile at how cheaty it is. There's our new layer. Okay, new image, new layer. Of course, we don't work anything else but new layers. And I'm going to not change color. I'm going to go to black and white. I'm going to make this a gray, if you like. All right. And I'm going to change my selection tool to a circle. Place my cross right at the top of the page. Drag it all the way down. Hold shift to keep it as a perfect circle. And there you see my guidelines popping in saying, yes, you are mad. Okay, I'm not particularly phased by what shape it is. I'm going to fill it. I am going to then go to select, modify, and contract. And I'm going to contract it by, let's say, 50 pixels. And what that's going to do is that's going to contract my mask that I had. And now I can press delete. And there's a circle with a gap in the middle. If I hide the uh, white behind, you'll see that that's what it's doing. I'm going to take that and I'm going to go back to my selection tool. I'm going to press Alt. I'm going to grab onto that gray block and I'm going to move it down. And now I have two rings, except I'm going to make this one a little bit smaller. Position it so it's in the center of the screen. Again, come on, somewhere, somewhere there. Maybe make it a bit bigger. Personal preference is entirely up to you. All right, then I'm going to select that. Control E to link them together. Find our midpoint. Find our midpoint. Go back to my rectangle marquee tool, however, whatever you want to call it. Brush on the one side, on the other, and drag it down. Delete. Once I've selected layer one, delete. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Delete. All right. So we get this kind of shape happening. I'm then going to go image. I'm going to uh, edit. I'm going to go to find brush preset. There you go. Right. Close that. No, we don't need to save it. Come back here. And now... As I zoom in and let my computer think about it, it is a big image after all, sitting at 4.6 gigs of uh, memory. I can now come and use my pen tool. Da, 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 da. And look, we've got a circle tool that will make us a nice vague circle. We're going to make a, above the stars, a new layer. We're going to make our brush 100% so that when I make a circle, it's a bit brighter now. I'm going to change it to a nice, lightish, vibrant blue. ka -ching. So we've got that. And I'm going to make it smaller because it should be. And now I can go and say, right, that is a capital planet. And I can zoom in, which I would normally do anyway before I start to uh, do this. Come in all the way. to 100%, I'm at 50%, 60%, 100%. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to then come here and start to ring fence my planets just like that. Those are the three capital planets there. And now I'm going to do that everywhere where there is, that's not a big star, where there is a big star or some kind of phenomenon. Like here there's a mistake with my smaller stars. I'm going to label it anyway. It was intentional. Of course it was. Those aren't big stars. And so this is all that I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way through all the big stars, maybe zoom out a little bit, 
anything that's funny shaped and just go around and mark them all so that I start to get my planet look. And I'm working on the same layer, layer four at the moment. Should probably change that. No, wrong place. Click on the name to change it. And we're gonna call these, say, locators. And just run around to each and every one. And I'll be back just now. So that's now dotted every I, but not yet crossed every T. We're going to move the locators underneath the stars so that where we have some that have overlapped with others by virtue of proximity, for example, like down here, the stars are at least still clear, even though the circles are not. The circles are really just to delineate and to make it look more like a star map. Let's bring back our countries, territories, Next, and this is why I still have the map of Braxia on hand, although for the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to move it over onto another screen for myself to work with, because, and here's why, I'm now going to move in and start naming every single little big star that we've got out there based on the same names from my map of Braxia. And again, it's just to bring it back to say, you remember running around Kimber on tour, and here is the planet known as Kimber. You remember running around on Sparvan Castle overlooking Sparvan Gulf, and now you've got both of them in the space map, except it's Sparvan Prime, or Sparvan 3, or... Seti Alpha Sparvan, however you want to pronounce it. It's just about keeping familiarity with the players. So I will bid you adieu until I have sorted that out. Now, something to bear in mind, I've now got my screen set up so that I can start transposing names across. You can, of course, come up with new names, and that's entirely up to you. And if this is an original um, map that you're doing, then absolutely come up with new names. Sorry, I just see there's a rogue. Oh no, that's because it's slightly bigger than the rest. I know what that's for. All right, never mind. Sorry, I got sidetracked. Right, so you're going to choose a space. Howden Lee is one of the more famous castles that my players have burnt down, ransacked, invaded, defended, and done all sorts of funny things with. So I'm going to create a new layer, and uh, I'm going to call this Howden Lee. And I'm going to pop in to make sure that, oops, not spacebar. <laughs> All right, so we're done with that. Yes, we are done typing it. Thank you. I'm going to come down here and just make sure that when I'm sitting at oh, even 50%, I can read that name. And yes, I can. There we go. We are at 66%. Howden Lee is very clear. Now, where you choose to put this entirely up to you, I like to put it so that it's not overlapping stars and that sort of thing. And sometimes you might have to go in and actually delete stars in order to achieve that. I'm not going to give it any fancy drop shadows or anything like that. I think flat plane is, as long as it's legible, is exactly what we want. And when we pop out, can we still read it at 16% zoom out? Yes, we can. So that is the scale at which I'm going to work. That size 20 font, uh, uh, size 20 font, this particular font, Agency FB Bold, I think I found on 1001freefonts.com. And uh, head along over and find the font that's appropriate to you. And then go mad.
Okay, so now, if I've done my homework properly, I have now labelled every city, city, every planet on this map. And that's what it looks like. I don't think there's anything that I've missed. So now I've got just this mile long list of names with some locators stuck there. So I'm going to grab this bunch, control E. I'm going to grab this bunch, control E. Now I am collapsing these simply to save my computer from overloading. And because I don't need to change those names anymore. I've checked the spelling. I've done all due diligence as required. What we now need to do is we now need to identify the actual empires themselves for our players. And that's a simple process of choosing a slightly larger font. Let's work in here. The human kingdom or the human space in my world is known as the Brunei. So we're going to call this the Brunei Alliance. Now, this is the trickiest part about, in my opinion, about naming races is that you can't fall back on kingdom. You've got to use things like dominion and collective and things like that. So I find that a real challenge. I'm going to close the gap up there. All right, I think that looks pretty cool. The Brunei Alliance is nice and bold when I zoom out because that's what you got to check because remember your players might be looking at the map like that is it still legible from pulled out and is it legible from close up and it's not blocking anything so there we go the Brunei Alliance is now labeled what I'm going to do is now to make sure that my font sizes remain the same I can now just hold down the alt key left click on the text and drag it to the next point that I'm going to label now I can see already here I've got a problem. There's nowhere to label within that space. Now this was just known as the Tiefling Cabals um, on the Braxia map. So I really don't think it should be called that anymore since the races are going to change. But there's nothing stopping us from calling it Tifa Space. Or Tifa Tiri. That's interesting. And what would they be? The tieflings are a race of very interesting people. Would they have a, an alliance, a confederation? They're a bunch of city-states, aren't they, really? <laughs> interesting, interesting, interesting. Let us put them down as a confederacy. Spelling is not my strong point. Sometimes you have to look and see where it best fits, and I think there fits about the best. Confederacy. All right. Onwards and upwards. Now that we've named the, oops, almost named all of the areas with different types of names to give them their own kind of personality. Got one left to do here.
Okay. Now we've done that. Now all that remains to be added is entirely up to you. So uh, I always like to add in some merchant lanes or lines so that people can see how everyone disseminates out from their regions of space and it just adds an extra level of detail. Now these uh, city, these bigger names and things, I'm just going to... Okay, so I need to call that planet names. I'm just going to link these all together so they sit nice and neatly and I don't need to change any of them so bury them down into one and call them nations again just so that we can turn off whatever we want um, and print out as needed we think that's too busy. Uh, it depends entirely on us and what we think. Somewhere along the line, I've lost my background stars. That's a pity. Thankfully, I've been saving all the way along, so I will go and find them. Okay, so I went and found my stars again. They had vanished. That's looking much prettier now. Um, oh. oh, it went in there. It shouldn't be in there. It should be above there. I think that's looking pretty spanky, if I do say so myself. We can play around with what's on top. Um whether we want this down here. Maybe that makes it a bit clearer. Um, maybe duplicate these layers. Make it a bit brighter. There we go. That looks a bit nicer. And then we can just go in and just check nice up and close that we're not creating something that's too messy. Now, I think it's better just one layer. All right, so now we have got to almost the point of being complete. I just want to drop in the last few final pieces, which would be trade lanes. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Trade lanes, we need to select our brush. Uh, we need to create a new layer, which I'm actually going to drag down underneath everybody except for the stars. Check our brush size. No, we don't want it made out of our little circular loop. We want a nice hard line, and even that's a bit too thick. I'll halve that maybe. Yeah, that'll work. So let's have color, and the reason why is we're gonna use the pen tool. Now, this I find particularly fun to do. So I go, all right, Tull Prime is probably linked to Howden Lee, which is linked to Crispin, Landers Lost, all the way out to Wald Major. Wald Major is definitely linked to Grayton, and Grayton is linked to Banksy, which is linked to Hollyhock 2, which is linked to Middleston, which is linked to Milken Prime. Milken Prime has a trade route with Lamnalos, passing the Arken Hull, and that's as far as that line will run. So then you right click and you say stroke path using the brush and bingo you get a nice little line like that then you right click delete path so you can do something else now of course here we can then change this to say multiply no we can't we can change it to overlay no we can't how about screen maybe drop the opacity to something like that and we start to see the potential pattern that we get by doing this now uh, Grathen's world, for example, might be linked to this little planet here and then on to Dard. Do they have a trading um, agreement with the Tiferi Confederacy? Uh, let's say yes, but they can only go to Casa Zorlush. So then we're going to, as you guessed it, uh, oh yes, we're on. The, we've got to select a layer first. Right-click, stroke path. Yes, indeed. 
right click, delete path. Now, Grathen's world is probably linked to Banksley. Same story. And all I'm going to do is move around now and just link these planets together. They definitely have a trade from Grathen's world to Quethlin. And stroke path. Thank you very much. And delete path. Um, this is too long a void to travel across. They might go from here, actually, down to Tull Prime. And then from Twel Tw Tull Prime to Heinerun via maybe this small planet here. And then down to Heinerun. And we just keep on going around, dropping these in. I think it adds quite a nice visual feature. I think the Brunei Alliance will trade with almost anybody. So, and I like to give them little hops. So you say, well, you could do the jump across, but uh, stop off at this little unnamed planet, have an adventure, and then carry on from there. That at least would be my narrative thinking. They don't trade with Draken Space. And from Wald Major, you can go via there to eventually get to Sagi to trade with the Cathan. And I'm going to delete that path. I'm just doing all of the Brunei links at the moment. The Bravk Incarnate will not trade with the Brunei. The Hickwin Cluster will trade with anybody. And that will run all the way into the disaster that is all right good it's not obscuring it too much and um, there'll be a trade line up to Gwathenthope up there and probably from clinkers down to blinders not and down to Culvin so these would be, if you haven't worked out propulsion yet in your game, you'd probably find these are accelerator uh, pathways so that if ships do follow them, they gain a bonus to their speed, transit, uh, however you want to call it. Um, and it's about deciding now who is connected to who. So do the Cathan trade with the Hickwinny? I think that the Cathan are too noble for the Hickwinny to bother about. Now here I could, and I'm going to just so that we can see what that looks like, drop that in there. Yeah, I suppose it kind of makes sense. All right, uh, the Cathan Empire is all about trade from Osrami Sanka all the way down. So we're going to have a line that does, uh, X is not part of the Cathar Empire, to there and then to there and from there down to Sagi. All right. Delete path. This is their main trading point, jump to Kornam. From jump to Kor, you can get to Chata very quickly. Ranthambor, Kalsamio, and Sarangan Sarang. Sina, Chepikan, Angdar, Son, we need to get to these outliers as well. Don't 
trade with the Draken. The Draken are a paranoid lot. And you don't have to have all of them having some kind of rapid transport system. Um, it's up to you as to how advanced the races and things are, how paranoid they are in terms of getting from point A to point B. Um, some are more concerned than others. Um, some will use a branching structure. Some won't. Some will be more haphazard. And again, it's about trying to create flavor for the players by having these flight paths that they can look at and go, oh, well, if we follow that, we can get all the way to there. Um, or we are being pursued and we need to get out of here. So we're not going to follow these paths. So the bad guys will probably end up there before we get there and that kind of thing. There we have a rather interesting looking map. We might decide these lines are still too strong. Drop them by half again. That's a bit better. It's not so conflicted, I don't think. Now what we need to do is make this image even bigger. My computer's going to hate me for it. But we do need to do it. One, two, three in a bit. Three in a bit. Three in a bit. Three in a bit. Yes, make it that big. Okay, there we go. And the reason why I wanted that was simply so I could create another layer, drag it all the way down underneath here, and fill it. Generally, flat doesn't work either, so you'd want to give it some kind of texture, some kind of feeling. Um, yeah, that's slightly better. But I'm sure if I just use my imagination a little bit, and my brush, which I'm going to make size, yeah, let's make it, yeah, that'll actually work, and opacity 30, and if I just do something like this, you'll see what's going to happen shortly. I'm just turning it into a flag. And again, using that idea of the opacity, it does all the hard work for you. You'll see what's going to happen shortly. It's a very easy technique. Just changing your brush size, scaling it down each time and just randomly stroking over your lines not to care to color in anything like that just to give them almost a depth if you like i don't know how you describe that but just a layering of values all the way down as small as you are patient enough to take it See, it's creating little, almost like depth layering, if you like. And 
it's quite funny. As I as I finish doing this, I go, I know exactly what we should be doing. So Gaussian blur, our friend. There we go. So that's not too bad an edge. Um, if we really wanted to, a better idea, possibly, would be to make it gray, which will now go. There we are. And then onto that gray surface, I'm just going to hide that for a moment. Onto that gray surface, we're going to go blending options, pattern overlay, and choose a pattern like that. Why aren't we seeing it? There we go. There we go. All right. Interesting pattern. Not so interesting. Maybe. Definitely not. Over my dead body. Nope. Nope. How about a bag of nope? That could work. That could work. Definitely not. And if you do that, never talk to you ever again. All right, so we're going to go with these lines for now. There's not much to bevel or emboss here, so that's why that's not working. Go with a satin overlay, I suppose. Interesting. Okay. Turn that back on again. And we're starting to get a display board of some kind happening here. I'm getting quite excited. I'm going to cut out the map space of this. Oops. Cut out the map space properly. From here, get that happening. That's looking pretty interesting. Come back to my layers, double clicking every time I need to. This should now work a bit better. There we go. Can't complain about that. Can we? And if we now add a texture to it, we start to get something a bit more interesting happening on that metal shape. We don't want it to repeat too often. No, it's not really working for me, that pattern anyway. Let's try this pattern. We have tried it before. Let's say, okay, oh. Without it, I think I prefer it. And contour. Just playing around here, really. You guys get the idea, though, of what I'm trying to do, I think. That's better. Now, maybe we'll bring that texture back now. Yeah, that looks pretty spanky, actually. Especially if we do that. Not much more that I can think of to really muck about with it. Drop shadows all on black, nothing to outer glow. So I think we're kind of there. But what we do need to do is come back to this layer, open up a box down here. There we go. There's my middle. Fill it. Oh, yes and drag this layer all the way to the top. Uh, 
Now that's interesting. So, a bit messy there, my apologies. <laughs> So by leaving these streaks on, it breaks the image from being so strong. I don't know if I like it or if I don't like it. I think I'm going to leave the stars above it. That, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, don't need to shout at me. But I kind of like the streaking effect. On, off. On off on I think is definitely better I also think that's a bit better too it's not so bright but maybe the pattern overlay needs to change Something like that, maybe. Then what we do, we select the center area, because that's our square. Control Shift I to invert it. Back down here, and we're gonna go with surface blur. Which is not gonna work, because this is, this needs to be rasterized, so we're going to rasterize it first. And that just converts all the bits into a single layer. One day. Now we can come back to blending. Do some more contouring if we really wanted to. Throw another pattern over again if we wanted to. If we wanted to sort of play around with different options, that's kind of nice actually. Uh, it doesn't have to be completely over it though. Contour it a bit. Change our contour style. Again, it's just about playing around until you find something that you like. Uh, let's make it chiseled hard. Depth is good. Size is about right. No soften. Something like that. I could live with that. There we go. That's getting better. I can certainly live with that just by playing around with different settings and you can play as much or as little as you like. It's entirely up to you. I'm then going to come in here and just blur it. So I'm going to use a smart uh, surface blur. Just punch it up. And all it's going to do is just kind of knock out the horrid hard lines and stuff at the close-up level. Okay. Still, oh, 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 still thinking about it. Okay. Still can't decide if I prefer that or that. I think I think I prefer that. So I'm going to come back here. We've still got our box. Control I. No. Control Z. Control Shift I to send our bounding box back down here and delete. To delete away and leave our map nice and clean. And, oh, it doesn't, what's going on here? Did I delete too much? I think I did. So black space is going to become bigger. Oh, 
I was... You should know what I want to do. Okay, and then finally, last but not least, we need to give it a name. The Braxian Galaxy. I like that. It's big enough and bold enough that you can read it no matter where you are. Very clear, very clear indeed. Putting a scale onto something like this is a bit ridiculous, considering that we're dealing with light years. You can grid it if you want to, but again, I always find that a bit of a silly idea, considering that once again we are dealing with space. And uh, space doesn't really work so well in a flat grid. You can if you like, and I won't hold it against you. Wrong value. This is the one that needs to move down a bit. I can live with the font like that, maybe. And there we have it. The design your own galactic space map from scratch with all the tips and tricks and tools that I can muster. I hope that you have found this rather lengthy tutorial useful and that you will be creating your maps as many as you can and as fast and as far as you can. Spread the... That's fantastic because the more we put into creating maps as game masters, the more we can get out of our games, the more control we have over being able to tell stories on the fly, the more real it will feel because it's our space, our world. We put those trade lanes in, maybe not necessarily for a reason, but we had some kind of idea floating around in the backs of our heads and we acted upon it. So from me, I hope you have a fantastic afternoon, evening, morning, weekend drawing your galaxy map. And I hope that you have found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave us your comments on whether you want to know more. We would use a similar approach, by the way, if we were doing sector space. But at the scale that I've done this at, you can really start working on sector space anyway by taking the self-same map and breaking it down. I mean, this is only at 25%. You could really zoom in and work on these as much as you like. Now, just before I go, for those of you that have stayed until the very last moment, I've got a little bonus for you. And that is you take your home worlds, you duplicate the layer, you take the layer underneath, and you blur it. Not ridiculously so, but just slightly. And what it does is it gives your stars glow and that makes them pop. Doesn't that look a little bit better? Oh, oh, sorry, computer. And it makes your stars glow. And I, I think personally, it's just beautiful. It really gives them a otherworldly kind of presence. So well done for staying right to the very end and for getting that last little snippet. Until next time, happy drawing, happy creating, and most importantly of all, happy gaming.